Welcome back to NRM 638, Python Scripting for ArcGIS Applications, Spring Semester 2015. This is an e-learning class at the University of Alaska Fairbanks. This week we're going to work with search cursors to retrieve field values and update cursor to, re to change field values. So go to the Blackboard website and download from the Blackboard website this text file, searchcursor.txt, and that's what we're going to work on this video session. So the first thing we'll do is we'll set our workspace, and I'll set it to a folder. Go to my catalog window. I'll set it to this folder, week five, search and update cursors. And then what we're going to do is create a test geodatabase and it'll be a personal geodatabase and then we'll make a variable containing that geodatabase okay so what's inside this variable my geodatabase so that's the string inside this variable my geodatabase okay so we'll work with a test feature class so i'll use the create random points geoprocessing tool to create just 100 random points just as an example and later on in this video session we're going to make a square buffer around a point so i'll make an empty polygon feature class that will contain square buffers okay, and i have a comment in the text file there's two search cursors so one search cursor is arcpy.searchcursor and that's slow. That's basically the original ArcPy search cursor. And then the new and improved ArcPy search cursor is in the data access. So ArcPy.da for data access search cursor. It's far superior to the original search cursor. So we're always going to use the ArcPy.da cursors because those are new improved as opposed to the ArcPy dot cursors. So what we're going to do is we'll make a search cursor on our random points and we'll go search row equals search rows dot. And there's three things you can do with your search cursor row. One is what are the fields? The second is go to the next row. So let's do next. So those are the fields. So then what is the object ID of our row right now? So that would be the first field in this list. So right now we're at the second row in the table. So if we want to go back to the top of the table, we could go search rows dot reset. So that gets us to the top of the table and then grab a row. And then what's the object ID of that row? So we're at record number one and then we'll go to the next row and then what's the object ID of this row so we're at record number two okay so let's grab the XY coordinates of our second item in our list which is the shape and we'll put that in a tuple so now what's inside this tuple so it's the XY coordinate of our second point so we're all done with our search cursor, so we'll unlock it by deleting it. Okay, so now what we want to do is create a square buffer around our second point that had these XY coordinates. So what we'll do is we'll create a point object, and that point object will be the four corners will be, those corner points will be point objects. And then we'll make a variable for our random point X coordinate. So we'll put the X coordinate of our random point in this variable, and we'll put the Y coordinate of our random point in this variable. And then we'll make an array container that will contain the four corner points of our square buffer polygon ultimately. And then we'll make the four corner points. So we'll copy and paste the lower left corner lower right corner, upper right corner, upper left corner, and then we'll always have to close by getting at the same point as our original point. So that's the lower left-hand corner to close. So copy and paste this, control V to paste. Okay, so now what's in our 
poly objects or poly points. So now we've got our first point has an X of 190. And then our next point, we go to the right 10. And then our next point, we go up from 84 to 94, et cetera. And then note our first point should be exactly the same as our last point in the array. So that's going to be used to define our square, which is centered on our random point. So then we'll create a polygon object from our array of points. So if we did this correctly, the side width should be 10 and the height should be 10 of our square buffer. So if we say poly object dot, what's the area of this polygon object? It is 100, it would be a width of 10 and a length of 10. Or we could say poly object dot, what's the length? So the length of this polygon object is 40, so each side is 10 meters in length. So now we've got the correct polygon object. It's centered over our random point. So then we could use the insert cursor to make that polygon object our shape. Oh, so copy and paste. And then we can look at a square buffer in ArcMap. So we'll label our points, our random points using the object ID. So indeed it is the second random point, and then here is the square polygon that's centered around that second random point. And if we look at our square buffer attribute table, it indeed has a area of 100 and a length of 40. So each of the side is 10 meters in width and length. Okay, when we have an insert cursor, we don't know how many rows will be created necessarily. But if we have an existing table, we know how many rows are in that existing table. So therefore, if we use a search cursor or an update cursor, those are always on existing tables. We can use a width statement. And the beauty of the width statement is it automatically closes the table in other words, it unlocks the table when it's done. So basically it's with arcpy.da search cursor or arcpy.da update cursor as some rows and then you can loop through and then it automatically will unlock the table once you're done looping through. So let's execute this. So that's all it did was it looped through those rows but now the table is unlocked so we can look at it. So for example, we could go to our random points and we have complete access to the table. We don't get this error message about it being locked. We did previously, we always had to delete the cursor to unlock the table. Okay, another big advantage of search cursors are they allow for fast queries. So for example, we'll import this module, time it, which will allow us to report how many seconds it takes to execute some code. And what we want to do is a query, give us the point that has an object ID of 50. So one way you could do it is to use the make feature layer management tool, which is analogous to a definition query. So let's execute this tool and see how many seconds it takes to isolate with an object ID of 50. So it took 0.25 seconds can use a search cursor and it will be much faster. So let's do the search cursor method. So instead of 0.25 seconds, it took 0 0.004 seconds. So much, much faster. So that's the beauty of a search cursor. It's very fast. And then also you as a user can extract any field value you want and put it in um, any variable you want. So here I extracted the object ID and I extracted the XY coordinates and it only took 0 0.004 seconds as opposed to when we use the make feature layer tool it took 0.25 seconds and yet you still don't have access to the XY coordinates at that point. 
Okay, when you're making queries, it depends on what the geodatabase or shapefile you're working with. So if we have a shapefile or a geodatabase, this would be the query for object ID equal to 50. The fields are delineated by as a double quote. If you have a personal geodatabase, the field is delineated with square brackets. So what we can do is use arcpy.fielddeliminators and it decides what's the appropriate field delimiter. So it basically says, oh, it's coming from a personal geodatabase, I'll use square brackets. Or it says, oh, it's coming from a shapefile or a file geodatabase, and I'll use uh, double quotes. So we can use this arcpy.add field delimiters. So now what is in field name? So it looked at my geodatabase and it saw that it was a personal geodatabase. So it enclosed square brackets that are needed for personal geodatabase. So then we use that delimited field name to make a string query. So here's our string query. It's a Unicode text object ID equals 50. So then we could use that string query in our search cursor loop. So we can use that string query variable in our search cursor and then find from this random points whatever that query is and return the object ID, the X and the Y. So that took 0 0.004 seconds, it's object ID 50 and that's because our string query said, give me the point with the object ID equal to 50. Okay, we'll add a field to our random points feature class, and then we'll dissolve our points based on that field. So that created a multi-point feature class. So then if we use the search cursor, give us the object ID and the XY coordinates of all the points in that multi-point feature class. And it returns only the first object. So basically a multi-point is the row represents many points, but all these points are considered multi-points. So in order to access the XY coordinates of these multi-points, we have to do a special search cursor line. And that's, we're gonna use our multi-point feature class, get the shape XY coordinate, no query, spatial reference is just blank, and here we have true. So true says explode the multipoints to point objects that we can get the XY coordinates from. So now if we execute this loop, in this example I said just give me the XY coordinate of the shape, so that will just be one item in my list. So I would just say row item zero. So then it returns for all the multipoints, there's a hundred of them, the XY coordinates. So that would be analogous to here's our multipoint and here are the 100 points that are parts that represent this multipoint. So we want to get the XY coordinate of all these 100 multipoints. Okay, so if you go to the Blackboard website, I've got a quiz question for you. And that will lead you to the last video session, which is an update cursor. And this is the quiz question.